Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time it is going to be a Master Rule 5 combo tutorial. Master Rule 5 is literally a month away at this point going into effect in the TCG and OCG April 1st, 2020, and Master Rule 5, if for some reason you do not know, has reverted some of the Link format rule sets where we can now summon fusions, exceeds, and synchros in any zone in the main monster zone that we want, and don't have to use the extra monster zone or link zones for anything other than pendulums from the extra deck or link monsters. It allows a lot of decks to be really opened up and it allows a lot of you know combo potential to flourish with a bunch of decks new and old. And so I would be really, really, really like crazy to not do the first Master Rule 5 combo tutorial on the channel with Dragoonities. It would be just a sacrilege because Dragoonities has been a mainstay staple of my channel for years since the beginning this channel was founded on dragoonities and if i were to not do master rule 5 dragoonity combos and not do a dragoonity combo as the first master rule 5 combo it would literally be sacrilegious it would <laughs> because my channel is built around this nonsense but so what i'm going to be showing you is i'm going to be showing you a three card combo that ends on this board it ends on an omni negate with Borload savage a monster negate your opponent can't activate spells or spell effects and your opponent cannot summon from the extra deck. This Amorphage Goliath is at full strength. It's at 2750 because it's summoned off LP. Last step of the combo. And then I'm going to also discuss with you a little way on how you could also like have a variation of the combo that gets Amorphage Greed in the scale as well. And Greed is the trap negator. So your opponent can activate traps or trap effects alongside spells. Little minor variation, but I'll discuss it during the combo. This combo is really nice it's really cool it's very efficient you have to throw away resources for this combo to work i'm going to show you this combo real quick but first if you're new here and want to see more master rule 5 content and more general Yu-Gi-Oh content and enjoy what you see then make sure to leave a like maybe leave a comment down below and subscribe if you're new here i would love to welcome you on board i'd love to show you more master rule 5 content and all that sort of stuff but with that out of the way let me show you what this combo is and what this combo does all right, so like I may have already said, this is a three card combo and the crux of it is you have to get Descendantus plus Tuner plus a level four extender or a level six dragon extender. Something that you can make a tum with or something that you can synchro into a level six with. It doesn't matter what typing the card is if you're synchroing into a level six because Luin exists and Luin is generic. It just requires a Dragonity Tuner plus any level four non-tuner. So it could be a hand like this, Sinidus plus Dragon Ravine plus Dark Worm. Dark Worm can be discarded for Ravine to fulfill, uh, fulfill the other uh, part of the combo. Uh, it could also be something like Sinidus plus Tuner plus Foolish or Dragon Shrine for Dark Worm. Or it could be Sinidus Tuner Garuda or, May or uh, Mistleton or Instant Fusion for Mavelis or Monster Reborn to revive the Sinidus, right? There's a lot of different like variations that you could go with for this combo that like enter into just the deck has a lot of overlapping variations of what you can do you could even do summoner monk plus spell plus tuner like that's even one summoner monks discard spell discard tuner for senators that you summon off summoner monk like there's a lot of different ways for this to be viable as three different card combos but so for this one this one i'll just show you this uh because it's just what i have ready uh dragon ravine discarding the dark worm adding a tuner to hand and then the Dark Worm can special summon itself, and it doesn't matter if you add the, the Gate Zero or not, I'm just not going to here to save time. Uh, normal Summon Sinidus, use Sinidus, discard whatever tuner you have to equip a tuner from deck. Now, you want to get access to two Phalanxes and two Kooses in the form of this entire combo sequence. Uh, so if you started with Koos, then you equip Phalanx. If you start with Phalanx, you equip Koos. You want two and two. You want an even balance of them. You need two Phalanxes for developing your ending board, and you get a Koos off of Divine Lance, so, like, it just makes sense to do two and two. So, anyway, special summon Phalanx here, and then I'm going to synchro with this Dark Worm, which will go on top of my extra deck, and the Phalanx into Dragoonity Knight Luin. Now, this card on summon will equip a tuner from Grave to it, and then I can special summon that Phalanx that I just equipped back, and I can synchro with the Sinidus into the more specific synchro of Dragoonity Knight Gaedag. Now, Gatorg's effect is going to activate its effect for the first of four times in this combo sequence. We're going to add Blackwing Zephyros the Elite from our deck to our hand and then discard it. 
and then we're going to overlay the two level six synchros into Hieratic Dragon King of Atum. Now this is something I did not know that I missed nearly as much as I did until I started doing it again for these combo sequences. I got hit with huge waves of nostalgia when I started doing this as like the starting point of the combo again. Uh, it's actually just really neat. Like I, I didn't know that I missed this feeling or this boy, the best boy, nearly so much. But anyway, you're going to use a Tums effect detaching specifically the Gaetergus cost to summon our Darkness Metal from our deck. Then we're going to use Darkness Metal's effect to reborn the Gaetergus we just detached. Gaetergus effect will trigger for a second time, will not trigger, be activated. And we're going to add Blackwing Steam the Cloak from our deck to our hand and then discard Blackwing Steam the Cloak. Now, it doesn't matter if you drew these cards or not, you just have to discard them. Uh, so, like, if you had them in your hand and this combo is, you know, being started, you could just add different cards from your deck to your hand. You could add cards like the Amorphages, Lechery and Greed, you could add those early. You could add Extenders like Garuda, you could add other free cards like just Tuners or whatever. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what's in your hand, doesn't matter if these are in your hand. It just matters that they just get discarded. They gotta go to the graveyard for this combo to work. Now, from here, we're going to bounce the Red-Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon to hand for Blackwing Zephyros the Elite, and we're gonna take 400, like good old days. And then we are going to link away these two dragons, Atum and Gaederg, into the first link summon of the combo, Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. Now, if you've watched any of my previous combos, you know what we're about to do with this. We gotta make these combo tutorials and abuse this card before it gets banned because of Needle Fiber. We're gonna use Steam, the Cloak's Effect Engrave, tributing the Hieratic Seal and summoning the Steam. Now, the Steam specifically goes in this zone uh, for ease of the future of the combo. And then the Hieratic Seal will trigger because it was tributed by Steam to summon a dragon from our deck. And we're going to summon Tempest, the Dragon Ruler of Storms. Now, we have Red Med in hand, we have Tempest on board, we get to banish the Tempest, summon the Red Med from hand. Tempest was banished, so its effect triggers searching a Wind Dragon from deck to hand. And in this instance, we're just going to add Dragoony Phalanx. For the sake of keeping the combo self-contained, if you already had a Phalanx in your hand, you could just add something else, it doesn't matter. Uh, but like for the self-contained nature of this combo tutorial, adding Phalanx to hand off of Tempest is what we're doing here. But so now Red Eyes gets to use its effect again, and we're going to special summon the Gaederg from Grave for a second time, and then we're going to use Gaederg's effect for a third time, and here we're going to add a Morphage Lechery from our deck to our hand. This is the spell negator when I control an Amorphage, uh, and then we're going to discard Phalanx. So we have Phalanx, and a, we have two Phalanxes and a Kusin Grave at this point, and we're going to start stepping up into Barka. So we're effectively going to Soul Charge for four from our extra deck with Barka. Now from here, we need to make Romulus. And you would expect and probably think that we would link with Steam and Gaederg or Steam and Red Eyes into the Romulus, right? But the problem is, is that our ending board is actually very cluttered of six monsters that all are basically like necessary to be there in some form. And none of those cards can be made with the Steam Token, should the Steam Token spawn. So the Steam Token takes up a space on the board and actually gets in the way. This combo is actually just far too efficient at gathering resources and building its final board. That there are multiple instances of we have to just throw resources away for this combo to work properly and to function properly without locking yourself out with improper zone placement or just getting locked out by the fact that there's a steam token on the board that you can't do anything with because you need all the board space we can get to start stepping up into our final synchros and our final link plays. So instead of linking the steam away into Romulus, we're actually going to go a different route. We're going to link the Red, uh, the Red Med and the uh, Gaederg into uh, Romulus in this zone. And the Romulus on summon is going to search Dragoonity Divine Lance from our deck to our hand. Now we're going to equip the Divine Lance to the Romulus and then use Divine Lance's effect to equip a Coos from deck to the Romulus. Special summon the Coos, and then Synchro summon uh, Barka the Soul Charge Dragon from our extra deck. So, Dragoonie Knight Barka is summoned in the far left hand zone, and its effect on summon will equip all four tuners that we have engraved. The Coos we just got off Divine Lance, the Phalanx we got off Tempest, the tuner we started with, and then the tuner that we got off of Senatus. I too am a fan of Soul Charge, are you? I love this. Look at this, just four free cards. Pretty nice. But so, what we need to do now is we need to establish our Guard Dragon playline, and we need to prevent this Steam Token from spawning. It's a mandatory effect. If it was an optional effect, we could just link away with it and just choose not to use its effect. This wouldn't even be a problem. But we need to physically block this card from triggering. So we're going to use Guard Dragons to do that. So we're going to Special Summon Coos, and then we're going to link away the Coos into Pisty, which now hard locks us into summoning only dragons. 
which means that this Aqua Steam token, the effect will trigger to summon it because it's mandatory, but it will resolve without effect, and it will effectively keep our board nice and tidy. So, we're going to link the Romulus and the Steam token away into Triple Burst Dragon, effectively doing two things, clearing the Steam off the board and giving us a mutual zone that Pisty and Triple Burst point to so that Pisty can use its effect. And again, like I said, the Steam will trigger here, uh, because it is mandatory, even if something's preventing an effect from resolving, it will still activate if it's mandatory, uh, but it just doesn't resolve because we can only summon dragon cards, and the steam token is an aqua. So now, from here, we're almost in the clear. We have to make a couple more really good decisions to keep ourselves from getting locked out of the board space. And here's one right here. We have to use Pisty's effect now, and you would think we have this red eyes engrave, and that's a plus one to summon off Pisty, right? But again, the board space gets too cluttered, so we have to throw away the resource of getting Red Med into Gaederg back, and we have to go straight for Gaederg off of Pisty. It annoys the shit out of me, and I wish that I could have found a way to make that not the case, because I'd love to end on Red Med. But the board just is too cluttered, <laughs> so it just is how it is. So from here, we're going to link away the Pisty and the Triple Burst Dragon into a Link 4. And this Link 4 is a jump promo, which means this combo is only in a territory legal. Uh, but if you're playing it online, then who cares about territories? Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel. Now, for those of you that don't know what this card is, it's a Link 4, requires two plus effect monsters with the same type and attribute, so two Dark Dragons, Pisty and Triple Burst. And what its effect is, is once per turn, you can revive a monster from your graveyard to a zone this card points to in defense position with its effects negated, and if you do so, you cannot Link Summon for the rest of the turn. Now, we're not locked out of Link Summoning yet because we haven't used its effect, and it will be one of the last things that we do. But... This card is good and is necessary for us to finish out the combo because it will be reviving a level 6 to make our final synchro with. And that is why we are making it. Unfortunately, this combo is only legal in tournaments to North American territories because of this card. And I haven't really been able to find a combo variation that works this well without using this card. And I had to spend $20 on this card just to make this combo tutorial, so you're welcome, I guess. But anyway, from here, what we've done is by linking into this card, we've turned off Pisty. So we're not locked into dragons anymore. And we have this Gaederg that can use its effect for a fourth time. Now, here is the point where there's some variation into what you can do to your ending board. If you don't have another card in your hand to discard off Gaederg, so another Wing Beast or Dragon monster, at this point in time, if the other two cards in your hand are a Dragon or a Wing Beast, you can add a Morphage Greed from your deck to your hand and then discard one of those cards, and then you can scale Lechery and Greed. And Greed is Lechery but the Trap Negator. But if you don't have access to another monster, we're just going to use uh, the Gatorg's effect to add Baby Rock from deck to hand, discard it, and then it gets special summoned because Pisty is no longer on the board locking us out of doing that. But, like I said, if you had another card to discard, you could add Greed and discard that card and scale both Lechery and Greed on your ending board. And the only thing it changes about your ending board is it puts Greed in the scale and Barka stays Barka. We're going to step Barka up into Ascalon just for board space and resource management, but that's not necessary for the combo to be finished. So if you have another card in your hand that Gator could discard off this fourth activation, or if you would like, again, opened, you know, Zephyros, Steam the Cloak, or Baby Rock, uh, any of those cards, and then you could just add Greed to your hand and discard those. So you could just end with both of these in the scale. And like, that's super powerful. But not self-contained into the combo, so we're gonna stop talking about it for now. We're just gonna finish out the combo. I may talk about it again in a minute. But so from here, Baby Rock level two tuner, plus Synchro Monster into Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. And now from here, we can start building the final board. So I'm gonna special summon this Koos. I'm gonna link this Koos away into Elpi right here. And then I'm gonna special summon the two Phalanxes so that Barka now no longer has no equips on it and it's no longer valuable to keep around. So what I have to do is I have to Synchro with the Barka and the Phalanx because my zones are clogged. Like I can't Elpi, I can't Red Eyes, or I can't Darkness Metal Link, I can't do any of that. So I have to synchro with this Phalanx that's in this zone, because so you want to open up the uh, Darkness Metal Link zone, and the Barka into Ascalon. Now, this is just a big floater. It doesn't really contribute to the ending board that much. It's just huge, and it floats. That's it. That's literally just it. That's all that it provides. It's just a way to clear resources away, throwing away another resource effectively into the combo, but this time it gives us big boy. <laughs> that's it uh, and now from here we're done link summoning we're done uh, with everything else other than just using darkness metal to revive a card that you can synchro into Borload Savage with now this one is gonna be Gaedig. Uh if you made Vajrayana instead of Luin you could revive Vajrayana and then it'd go back into your extra deck off of the darkness metal links effect or if you started with Mistleton 
then you could get Mistleton, and that would go back to the bottom of your main deck uh, because of Dark Spindle Link's effect. But in this instance, have to get Gator. Its effect is negated, so you can't add and discard. Uh, and then you just synchro them away into Borlode Savage Dragon, and the Gator goes back into your extra deck because it goes to the bottom of the deck off Darkness Metal. Anything you revive with the Darkness Metal Link goes to the bottom of the deck when it leaves the fort, uh, field. But so, Borlode Savage Dragon is going to equip Triple Burst and get a 1200 attack point boost, so it's 4200 and has three counters on it for three negates. And then LP has not used its effect yet, and it has a mutual zone off the Darkness Metal Link, so LP can use its effect, special summoning the Amorphage Goliath from deck to this zone, and then you can scale the Lechery. So now your opponent can't activate spells or spell effects, can't summon from the extra deck, has to play through an Omni Negate and a Monster Negate. And this is pretty damn nice. This is a pretty nice board, even on the casual, like very much on the casual spectrum. Uh, this is still even like a kind of nice board competitively, funny enough. Like this is better than what Rocket Link is doing right now. Uh, and it's like kind of wild, but this board does lose to things like imperm evenly or double evenly matched stuff like that It doesn't lose to dark ruler doesn't lose to super poly doesn't lose to lightning storm because it can't activate spells and It loses to no extra deck threats unless they get you get like double impermed But even then if they double imperm you they have to play without spells and without a monster negate uh, without a monster effect so like that's kind of the hardest thing they could do but this combo and this deck is not really catered towards competitive play and I wouldn't be playing a Dragoonie deck in a environment where like those cards are common, like evenly matched and impermanence and stuff like that. This is very much a casual deck, but it, it still helps to see how far you can go with it, right? But like I said, if you want to make this board better and you had access to discarding another card off Gaedurg to keep another card in your hand, then you could have easily gone for a Morphage Greed. And then this could also be scaled. And the only thing you would change about the ending board is that Ascalon would be Barka, because instead of getting the tuner off of the Gator in the form of Baby Rock, you would just use a Phalanx that you could special summon to make Crystal Wing. And then you'd be down a tuner. And so you'd make Elpy, and then you'd summon the other tuner, and you'd make Borlo Savage with it, and Barka would just be chilling over here, right? That's effectively it for this combo tutorial. Again, it's only in a territory legal, but you could play it online, which is what I'm expecting most people to want to do with this anyway. This card, once it's worldwide released, you can do this anywhere, but like this is the best combo that I can come up with for MR5 with Dragoonities because like it just, it does a lot. Look at all the stuff that this did. Like look at what it's done. Like the board is clogged, all this stuff is here. It's game, just, it's game, duelist. But anyway, that is it for this comment tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment down below and I'll do my best to address them. Um, I don't know how much more Dragoonie content I'll be making. There's probably at least one more deck profile left in me because of the, uh, like, theory that this can go around. Uh, but again, like, gotta make this content before Steam gets banned because, uh, Needle Fiber is kind of broken with this card. So, gotta make that free content, am I right? But anyway, if you are new here and want to see more Master Rule 5 related content and more just generally good Yu-Gi-Oh! videos that I try to put out, uh, then I would implore you to subscribe. I'd love to welcome you on board. I'd love to show you more stuff. There are lots of other decks that I'm very fond of, like Mermail and other things that like I want to experiment, like, experiment with under Master Rule 5 um, and make like combo videos for and stuff like that. So if you're interested, make sure to subscribe. But other than that, that's it for this video. I've rambled on long enough. Thank you for your time as usual. Thanks for watching as always guys, and take care. I will see you in the next video.